Time Domain Analysis, Part 2.3. We're going to continue with convolution integral and and with total response and also the summary for this chapter. Okay, the graphical method step-by-step -step procedure. So the first one, you have to choose one signal to be at T and the other to be HT and draw them both in tau axis. For example, this one. So you have YT this is given to you, yt is equal to xt convolute with ht. So this would be x tau and then convolute with h tau. Now second one, rotate one of the signal h tau about the tau is equal to zero axis. So that's why your h tau has now become h minus tau because you have to rotate. Third procedure, shift the rotated signal h minus tau to the right by t. That's why your h minus tau has now become h t minus tau. Fourth step, multiply x tau with the flip shifted version of signal h tau. So you will have x tau times h t minus tau. And finally, calculate the area under this product using the correct limit of integration. So you're going to integrate uh, the x tau h t minus tau d tau from minus infinity up until infinity. Depend on the correct limit of integration based on the question that were given to you. Let us... Uh, see this example. So convolve the following two function. You are given ft convolute with gt. So first of all, you have to replace t with tau in ft and gt. So your ft has become f tau and your gt has become g tau. So choose to flip and slide g tau since it is simpler and symmetric. So you choose g tau here to be g t minus tau. We are going to flip and slide. So this one is going to be flip and slide and your f tau will remain the same. So the function will overlap like this. You are going to have your f tau over here which will not move and then you have your g t minus tau. This one has been flip and we are going to slide it. Thus, the convolution can be divided into five parts. You're going to have the first part is going to be t is less than minus 2. Okay, when t is less than minus 2, the two functions do not overlap. So this is your f tau. And then you have g t minus tau over here. When t is less than minus 2, this two function does not overlap. So that's why your area is equal to 0. Next, we move on to the second part. When your t is more and equal to minus 2 and less than 0. So part of your g t now is overlapping your f t. Okay, this part over here. So that's why you have to find out what the area under the product of the function is. So this is going to be uh, the integration from 0 up until 2 plus t, this area over here. So you will have 3 times minus tau plus 2 d tau. So try to integrate that and finally you will have the answer equal to minus 3 t squared over 2 plus 6. Okay, the third part is when your t is equal or more than 0 and then less than 2. Here, your gt completely overlaps your ft. Okay, so you have to find out what the area under the product is. 
So you integrate from 0 up until 2. And then 3 minus tau plus 2 d tau. And it will give you 6. The third part is when your t is more and equal to 2 and less than 4. Here, part of your gt and ft overlap. So you still have to find out what the area is. So calculate it similar to minus 2. Uh, uh, t is less than minus 2. T is more than minus 2 and less than 0. Okay. And then finally, when your t is more and equal than 4, here your gt and ft does not overlap. Okay. So your area under this product would be 0. So the result of the convolution, 5 interval of interest. So you will have when t is less than minus 2 up until when t is more uh, or equal to 4. So that will be your output of the convolution between ft and gt. So this is your final outcome. Now, the time domain representation of the LTI system. Okay, A continuous time signal can be expressed as a weighted superposition of the time-shifted impulses. So you have at t is equal to at tau, impulse of t minus tau d tau, the integration from minus infinity up until infinity. So the convolution integral evaluation procedure, the first one is you already have that the output of a convolution integral would be at tau h t minus tau d tau. So here we are going to define the intermediate signal or the width under it, the area is equal to w tau. So we are going to simplify your at tau h t minus tau is equal to w tau. Bear in mind that your h t minus tau is actually h minus tau minus t. Why? Because it is being reflected and shifted by t. So the time shift t determines the time at which we evaluate the output of the system. Okay, this is another example that we're given to you. So reflect and shift convolution evaluation. So you're given two signals. We're going to convolute these two. Okay, so you have at t is equal to ut minus 1 minus ut minus 3. So this will be the figure. And then you have ht is equal to ut minus ut minus 2, which is this figure. So the question asks you to evaluate the convolution integral yt is equal to xt convolute with ht. So how are you going to uh, solve this question? So first of all, we're going to change your xt to become x tau and your ht will become h tau. After that, you're going to flip your ht and shift it. So that's why it will become ht minus tau. Okay, this is shown in figure 2.11a, which is this one. Yes, so you have your at t over here. So t has become tau. And then you have ht minus tau. Where it has been flipped or reflected. Okay, and time shifted. Now, next one, you have to break it into several parts. So there are going to be four intervals for this case. The first one is when t is less than 1. Second interval is when t is more than 1 or equal to 1 and less than 3. 
third interval is when your t is more than 3 or equal to 3 and less than 5. And finally, your fourth interval is when your t is more and equal to 5. So the first interval of time shift, when your t is less than 1, the area or the width will be equal to 0. Okay, when you apply this one, when your t is less than 1, it's going to be 0. And then you're going to solve the second interval. When your t is more or equal to 1 and less than 3, it will give you 1. Other parts is going to be 0. And then the third interval is when your t is small and equal to 3 and less than 5, you are going to have 1. And other parts is going to be 0. And finally, when your t is small or equal than 5, your area or your width is equal to 0. So the convolution integral, the output will have 4 intervals. And this is your result. After getting all these, you have to find out what the output is. You have to draw the graph. So this will be your yt, the output of the convolution integral, which is this graph over here, the system output yt. Okay, you can try this one out, example 2.7 and also 2.8. Interconnected system. Okay, parallel connected system. So if you see here, you have an impulse coming into two systems. This is your impulse signal coming into S1 and S2. There are two systems. So it will yield H1T and also H2T. So your output is going to be yt is equal to h1t convolute with xt plus h2t convolute with xt. So for a cascade system, you have an impulse signal coming into one system, so S1, and this will give you the impulse response, h1t. And that impulse response is coming into another system, S2. And this will yield you this will give you ht is equal to h1t convolute with h2t. So your output is going to be yt is equal to h1t convolute with h2t and then convolute with xt. And for integration, you have xt is coming into a system that will give you yt and then you have the integration part. And the second example is when your xt is coming into the integration part and then it goes into a system and this two is actually the same. Okay, so this is also true for differentiation. So let xt is equal to delta t and yt is equal to ht. So xt is an impulse and ht is the impulse response of the system. So what does it mean by system stability? So we consider causal linear time invariant system. So the key concept here is equilibrium state. So what does it mean by equilibrium state? It is zero state. So when you have a signal, when you have a system in zero input condition, the it, it, the signal should go to zero as t approaches infinity. This means that the system is stable. Okay, so this is a stable system and this is an unstable system because if any of the modes grows without bound, the system is unstable. So, if the zero input response remains bounded, approaching a constant or oscillating with a constant amplitude as t is nearing infinity, then the system is marginally stable. So, this figure is showing you a marginal stable system.